Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Martha with Our Brain Bank. Welcome, everyone. Today, we have a special guest, Peggy Frangillo. Am I pronouncing it right? Frangillo. Perfect. Frangillo. And uh, of Novacure, and she's going to talk about Optune and tumor treating fields. Okay, go ahead, Peggy. Shall you want to share your screen? Uh, perfect. It says host disabled. Okay, so I'll make you host. Okay, and then just remember to um, put it back to me when you're when you're done. Sure. Let's see, it's still not sharing screen. Uh -oh. Now it says your host. Oh, here it is, here it is. Okay. It's, coming up. it's coming up now. Can you see my, my screen, everyone? Yes, looks great. Okay, wonderful. Well, I truly appreciate you guys taking the time today. I'm Peggy Frangelo. I am one of the thought leader liaisons here in the Northeast. And I'm really honored to be here to share some information uh, specific to our FDA approved treatment for glioblastoma. So as I move through this, I, there are a couple things I need to actually say out loud for you all. So let me bear with me as I read this information. This is important safety information. And it really speaks to what is op Optune and, and what is approved for. So Optune is a wearable portable FDA approved device indicated for the treatment of brain cancer called glioblastoma multiform or GBM in adult patients 22 years of age or older. We have a newly diagnosed indication for GBM. And that is, um, if you've been newly diagnosed, Optune is used in conjunction with chemotherapy called temozolomide. And if your cancer has been confirmed by a healthcare uh, professional, this is generally after you've had surgery and removed as much of the tumor as possible. For uh, an additional indication for GBM, it, we have a, a recurrent GBM. And this is when the tumor has come back. So this is, Optum can be used alone as an alternative standard, uh, alternative to standard medical therapy. Um, this is what would be if you've retried both surgery and or radiation um, and they were no longer working. So who should not use Optum? So we know that it's not for everyone. And if you've had the conversation with your physician, it's important to know that if you've had uh, an implanted medical device, such as a programmable shunt, a skull defect or missing bone with no replacement, or even bullet fragment. And this is basically um, because there hasn't been any um, additional um, research on that. So it may, may actually render the device uh, improperly working. So we also know that it, it shouldn't be used for patients that have a, a sensitivity to uh, any conductive hydrogels. And that would be specific to someone who perhaps knows that they have a sensitivity to an EKG lead or something of that nature. So, um, and we also know that, that it, it hasn't been studied in pregnancy. What, what you should know before using Optune is that anyone who starts on Optune um, has to be uh, prescribed by a qualified personnel, whether it's a doctor or an MP, a PA, a clinician that has gone through our um, uh, uh, discussion as far as certifying those providers. Um, and one of the things that when, yeah, when I share what the device looks like. There are several components and it's really inclusive of everything. So you, you should really use everything that is provided to you from the company in terms of usage. And what that means is even our bag that we put the device into is FDA approved. And there's a reason for it, it needs to be well vented. So there are possible side effects related to Optune. The most common side effect uh, that, is, that is known uh, is, is thought to be with uh, chemotherapy. Uh, where you would experience potentially low blood counts, nausea, constipation, vomiting, tired, tiredness, scalp irritation from the device itself, headache, seizure, and depression. So just moving on to, let's just, um, so the purpose of today's presentation is really to provide an understanding of, of what Optune is, introduce you all to the device support specialist, and share what the device looks like. I actually have um, a couple of videos in this virtual world that we're in. So I have ambassadors. I have a couple of stories, both from a patient ambassador as well as the caregiver ambassador. And then, well, uh, I have a couple of additional videos that we'll explore that will look at what the device is, uh, how Optune works, 
and uh, we'll take some brief questions at the end. And if you want, you can actually put some uh, questions in the, in the chat so I hopefully can answer anything specific. I have to power through this and, and hopefully get this uh, all this information to you. So if I talk fast, this is a small group, please feel free to stop me at any point. One of the things that I do need to discuss uh, is that before I start, I always remind people, get out a pe paper, pen, um, if there's something specific that you wanna discuss or something that I'm saying makes you say, aha, maybe I should perhaps speak to my physician about that, write it down. And if it's something that I can't personally discuss because it's related to your specific treatment plan, then it's a good opportunity when you uh, next meet with your provider, you'll have that uh, in hand. So some of the basics on glioblastoma. So what is glioblastoma or GBM? Well, we know it's a primary brain cancer, which means that the tumors itself begin in the brain. And it is the most common type of primary brain cancer for adults. We know that unlike breast cancer or lung cancer, the prevalence isn't as high, but uh, know that you're not alone, that we have uh, roughly about 13,000 new cases here in the US each year. And that's whether it's a primary GBM or um, a, a particular tumor that may uh, develop into a GBM. So as I mentioned, there's a couple of different um, indications. So really keep in mind that what, what's the difference between a newly diagnosed or recurrent GBM when it's a GBM tumor that's confirmed by the physician and it's newly diagnosed, it could be newly diagnosed for that first couple of years. And that means that the tumor hasn't re, uh, has not come back. That means the MRIs and the results are still considered uh, newly diagnosed. Recurrent GBM is when the GBM has returned after a period of time. And that's where uh, the physician would refer to the, the uh, progression disease as, as GBM. Um, for recurrent disease. And this, was, this would be uh, revisiting surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. And the reason why that that even may occur is because unlike other solid tumors, the GBM, that multiform, uh, the, the diagnosis itself, is that it has multiple little finger-like tentacles is what they describe. And it could spread to areas, even though they they believe they get as much as possible at uh, the time of surgery. Uh, some of those cells can, can escape. So what, what's Optum? Well, as you can see here on the top right, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. This is the device itself. This here is, is actually the device with this uh, CAD system here. These are the four patches or arrays that we refer to that are on the scalp. And there's one on left to right, front to back. They speak to each other about 200,000 times a second with about a one second interval. And this is uh, a portable, wearable, and it's a continuous treatment. The device itself now is, is about 2.7 pounds. And the recommendation in utilizing or wearing the device based on large clinical trials is about 75% of the time, which is 18 hours a day. So that's not to say that you don't have an opportunity to take treatment breaks. So as you can see here, there's a couple of our ambassadors and I should point out that in all of our literature and print, we only, we don't have actors. We use all, all of our real ambassadors, our people. So this here just shows a depiction of this gentleman here on the left prefers to have it as use, utilized as a backpack. Whereas this gentleman here uh, wears it as a sling bag. So it's wearable, portable, those four patches or arrays that I mentioned and that those patches are delivering the tumor treating fields itself. And it's being delivered directly to where the tumor, tree, uh, the tumor site is. Um, it's been safely shown in clinical trials to deliver this continuous therapy. Um, the, the transducer arrays are applied to the scalp and they're again, connected via the, the CAD system that I mentioned. So, so how does it work? So the a tumor is only job is to continue to proliferate and grow in, into uh, additional cells. So here you can see simply a tumor cell trying to continuous uh, to continue to divide into more tumor cells. So what's happening is that inter intermediate uh, low intensity intermediate frequency is disrupting that tumor's ability to, to continue to grow. So it's either slowing or stopping that GBM cell from dividing and ultimately may destroy them as, as found in this picture here. So this is a, a quick little video I don't know if you all have seen this, Lynn, you may have seen it in Hannah before, 
Um, and, and I should point out that everything that I'm presenting here today can be found on our website as well and multiple buckets on the, on the very comprehensive option.com website. Today's talk is about glioblastoma cancer cell division and tumor treating fields. Normally, most of the cells in our body can grow and divide. In order to divide, cells need to make a copy of their DNA. When they do divide, it's in a controlled and organized way. During cell division, three important things happen. One, DNA must align in the center of the cell. Two, finger-like fibers called microtubules form and pull apart the DNA to opposite ends of the cell. And three, the cell pinches apart in the center to form two identical cells. When cells become cancerous, they undergo changes that cause them to divide uncontrollably and form masses called tumors. Optune is a wearable and portable FDA-approved device for the treatment of GBM. Let's take a closer look. By creating tumor treating fields, or TT fields, Optune helps slow or stop GBM cancer cells from dividing and may also cause some of them to die. Here's how. Whether cells are healthy or cancerous, they all have cell parts that have electrical charges. TT fields are alternating wave-like electric fields. These forces can interfere with cell division at two points in the process. One, the finger-like fibers called microtubules rely on their electric charges to form. In the presence of TT fields, microtubules can struggle to form correctly and cannot pull the DNA in opposite directions, potentially slowing or stopping cell division, leading to cell death. Or two, as the cell continues to divide, the combination of the cell's hourglass shape and the effect of TT fields can push cell parts to the center of the dividing cells, potentially causing structural damage and cell death. TT fields work when cancer cells are dividing and generally do not disrupt healthy resting cells. TT fields work in a different way than other treatments your doctor may recommend for GBM, like surgery, radiation, and chemotherapies. For people with newly diagnosed GBM, Optune is used together with the chemotherapy temozolomide, TMZ, following surgery and radiation together with chemotherapy. For people with recurrent GBM, Optune is used alone once options like surgery and radiation have been exhausted. For more information about TT fields, please speak with your doctor or visit Optune.com. So that shows you how the tumor treating fields work. And now here's another one. This is actually in vitro uh, evidence of how that mechanism of action is seen in the cellular structures. In the following films, we see two identical cultures of cancer cells followed in time-lapse under the microscope. The culture on the right is an untreated control while TT fields are being applied continuously to the culture on the left. The first difference between the cultures appears about two hours after treatment start. No cell divisions are seen in the TT fields treated culture, whereas in the control culture, cells have already started to divide. It takes 12 hours for the first cell to round up for mitosis in the treated culture. In addition, cell cleavage, cytokinesis, is delayed and takes three hours to finish. The next difference between the cultures is that in the treated culture, cells round up for mitosis. However, they are not able to complete the normal division process at all. They remain arrested in mitosis for about five hours and then die through programmed cell death, apoptosis. This mitotic arrest and apoptosis is seen in dividing cells only. The dying cancer cells in the TT fields treated culture exhibit membrane blebbing, the hallmark morphologic characteristic of programmed cell death also known as apoptosis. After almost two days of TT field treatment, the difference between the control and treated cultures is clear. Cancer cells fill the entire available space in the control culture, while in the TT fields treated culture, only those cells that did not attempt to divide remain alive. 
Cells undergoing apoptosis are also known to bind annexin to the plasma membrane. The red color seen in these pictures shows annexin bound to the membrane of cancer cells treated by TT fields. These cells subsequently undergo apoptosis. One of the primary structures influenced by TT fields is the spindle protein, tubulin. By using tubulin fused to a green fluorescent protein, it is possible to follow spindle morphology during cancer cell replication. As seen in this time-lapse microscopy film, TT field application to cancer cells leads to abnormal spindle formation and eventually to apoptosis. So that, so, so understanding that tumor treating fields are um, non-systemic, but as it, the, the cells that need to, the GBM cells that are rapidly dividing or undergoing mitosis, falling within the field, have that opportunity to either stop or uh, that programmed cell death is what apoptosis means. So when you look at the benefits, you can see here that just, I just need to move this just a bit. So this, this really looks at like, how, how does Optum fit into my treatment plan? So if you're newly diagnosed, it can be used in, in conjunction with chemotherapy and it's generally uh, administered four to seven weeks post radiation with chemotherapy. And again, as I mentioned in the uh, recurrent GBM setting, it's, it's used as a standalone treatment. When you look at uh, what the newly diagnosed setting uh, proven extent of survival is, you can see in a large five-year follow-up, a large cohort of uh, clinical trial of Optum plus chemotherapy, patients uh, as seen in the blue are Optum plus temozolomide. And this was whether it was year one or year five, the Optum plus temozolomide patients actually uh, extended survival. And what's important to note that nearly half the patients were alive in two years, and there was a better survival at five years. So when you look at, again, Optune treats where the tumor is located without increasing that chemotherapy related side effects, remember it's non-systemic. So it's effective when combined with chemotherapy, it treats where the tumor is, Optune, um, you know, it, it's, it has that opportunity to deliver by either stopping or slowing the growth of those uh, actively dividing cells and we know that it's wearable and portable. When you look at the recurrent setting, it has the uh, proven comparable survival results, although it did not add any additional uh, adverse events or, or side effects for patients. But what we did see in this large clinical trial was that it provided a better quality of life for patients. Patients actually reported they had better memory and concentration, their cognitive function was somewhat preserved, they had uh, less tension or irritability, so it had an effect on their emotional functioning. And then obviously the overall survival was comparable. So um, that was what, what led to this approval in the recurrent setting. So the whole idea is to incorporate Optum now into your daily life. And as you can see here, one of our patient ambassadors continuing to work out and, and want to um, stay as active as possible. So the question often is, how is it gonna fit into my life? Well, this is obviously is uh, not for everyone, but we know that this continuous treatment is something to have a discussion with your doctor. And if he says it's okay, opt to, and you can continue to go about your daily routine uh, while you're traveling, social functions. And we have a lot of patients that actually are still actively working. So when you look at how to incorporate um, some of the, some of the uh, head coverings and, 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 and such. I have a, a nice photo on that, but you can see that it's important to take care of your scalp. So we know that you need to shave your head and you need to change those arrays at least twice a week, every four days at most. And the, the key to um, um, when you would, would be, uh, you know, planning uh, any kind of activity it's really something that's surrounding a, a water activity. You can't get these arrays or the, or the cords itself uh, wet, but we do provide you with the shower cap so that you can take a shower daily. And then clearly on those array day changes is when you really have an opportunity to take a shower and um, provide a good, good cleanse on your scalp. We know based on our large clinical trials that the suggestion is 75% of the time. So that translates to 18 hours a day and Often our ambassadors report that the bulk of that is, is while they're sleeping. 
So this is just, uh, we have a tremendous amount of resources. So optimdailylife.com is one of, uh, one of our, our websites. But as you can see here on the, on the right-hand side, baseball cap, beanie, headscarf. And here you can see how uh, some of our ambassadors have chosen to wear those. So how, how do you prepare your scalp for placing these arrays? Well, it's important we provide you through that device support specialist that comes to the house and, and does the full training. So they sh shave your scalp very closely with an electric razor that we provide. Um, it's important after shaving to really wash that scalp with like a mi uh, mild fragrance free shampoo or anti dandruff shampoo. And then make sure your hair head is completely dry before applying uh, a new set of arrays. So I have a, a video here uh, from one of our one of our patient ambassadors. Well, we've been married now 40 years. He has this beautiful blonde hair, I mean, gorgeous blonde hair, blue eyes. And that, I mean, how could you let a man like that go? <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be adjustment period. So when, when you're expecting certain things that you wanna go about life right away, you might have to take a month or two to kind of get used to just wearing it. It didn't take long. I had to get used to the idea that, like, at night, it's still on my head. And once I got used to how to do the bag at work, I had to make some arrange, some, you know, adjustments with this bag and I put it on my hip. And I just go, and it's like a part of me now. I used to work out at least once a day, if not more. So I knew I couldn't be as spontaneous as before. So it takes a lot more planning now. The first fear is how, how much will this change my life? The diagnosis in and of itself changes your life. That's... That's the beginning of it. But Optune itself doesn't force a lot of changes. Sleeping with it, if I got up during the night, I had to unplug and stuff. And it, it, you, you get used to it. You have to learn how to put the arrays on. I don't remember it being that difficult. We just flowed with it, went down that path. I was a little worried about being able to change the pads myself. I found that I could I could do the changes really well in my apartment because I have all of these mirrors set up. It looks kind of like a fun house, but I can see 360 degrees around my head. So that's easy. And then for sleeping, I just have more pillows than your average person probably now. <laughs> Shaving my head doesn't bother me anymore. It did initially. That, for me, that was a scary part, so I got that out of the way. Um, but now it's just, I just take a shower, shave my head, put the rays on. It's not an issue anymore. It was a sad end moment because when you going through cancer, the hair part is like, is a devastation. Like, you're, you don't know how it's going to grow back. But when something comes in to help you live longer, we just use the little buzzer and go at it. I was kind of proud of my uh, and a hopeful had it hair, and one day it was gone. I, but you're alive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I was cute with my hair. It was like, you know, a little thing on. I was cute. But when I my initial shaving, I stood in the mirror full of while, I got kind of get used to the idea, you know, <laughs> I'm cute with it. So I work it. We travel a lot. It doesn't stop us. It's been to the theater in London and it's been to Hong Kong, Dubai. I think for most people, it just becomes the new normal. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but their normal and our normal will be different, but it's still our new normal. Knowing what it was, I really wanted to attack it head on and have a better quality of life. And this has given it to me because I'm able to go about life. If I'm gonna be around as long, a little longer at time in my life, then this is what I have to do on a daily basis. This is what I have to do and I'm gonna make it work. He's vertical. You know, and anything, meaning he is um, he's alive, he's upright. <laughs> uh, so far, I've had seven MRI scans, and they've all been clear and stable, which are, I've come to find out are the three best words that a GBM patient can hear, clear and stable. <laughs> it's good. It took me a long time to realize that, but here is over it. I mean, I was spending $75 every three months. I'm getting my hair done and the products, you know, so I'm saving a lot of money to buy more shoes. <laughs> hmm. I have another, another one um, specific for the caregivers. Right. 
My name is Debbie, and I'm from Zanesville, Ohio, and I'm a caretaker for my husband, Bob. My name is Andrea. I am from Orange County, California, and I am a caregiver for my husband, Daryl. My name is Joshua. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I care for my brother, JB. My name's Kathy, and I'm from Riverside, California, and I care for my husband, Tim. I think when a loved one is first diagnosed with GBM as a caregiver, we have to um, go slow. We have to be patient with our loved one. My advice to other caregivers would definitely be to just be there for them and to let them know that you're there to support them and to help them through whatever they need. So just to be there. How are you there for them? Whatever he needs, I'm willing to try to do. Optune gives you an opportunity to directly participate in your loved one's care. What was helpful for me in supporting my husband, Daryl, when he was first diagnosed was the incredible support system that we had from family and friends. They built such a safety net for us that when we stumbled and almost fell, they made sure we never hit the ground. When JB was first diagnosed, I looked for information like through our doctors and other medical workers, as well as, you know, checking the internet for resources and just seeing what is available. Um, one thing I found helpful is when people would bombard me with research, I sent stuff to my older sister and let her decipher it for me. So I think that's the biggest thing, you know, have a support person to help you research, but be patient with your patient. Do your research, um, get ready, prepare, talk to the people like in Compass who you can, as well as, you know, prepare a routine and get ready for that because it's all about finding the rhythm that you can in order to integrate it into your life. Try not to dwell too much on the negative, you know, the bad, but it's hard not to do that. But um, just mainly to be there for them and support them. It does get easier. Um, after a few weeks, it'll become normal routine. Just takes a little bit more time to get ready to go places, but it does get easier. As advice to other fellow caregivers, I would offer that they uh, take care of themselves, you know, in order to take care of their loved ones because this is a marathon and not a sprint and it is really easy to forget that. All of the caregivers that I speak with are a bit anxious, but we all get over it in a few different weeks. And what I did not realize when I started as a caregiver with Optune is that it is not an exact science about how arrays get placed and other people are expert caregivers for their loved one, the same way that soon you will be the expert on your caring for your loved one. Pretty special. So there are multiple resources that, as I mentioned, Optune.com, very comprehensive, and all of this information that I'm presenting here today is found on that website and in uh, several different uh, areas. Some of the resources specific, one that it, we find and we hear from, from our patients over and over is uh, something called the Optum Buddy Program. And this is truly invaluable because it has a, it gives the patient the opportunity to connect with um, another patient that is experienced in GBM and what uh, some of the challenges may have been and have that frank discussion. We really do try to connect um, if it's an older person, younger person, if it's a very active person, uh, we try to match up demographics as much as possible. Um, or, you know, someone may want to just talk to another female. Um, so we really do try our best. And, and um, this opportunity truly is uh, invaluable. And this is one of the programs. people considering Optune to do a buddy call because you can get a wealth of information from people who've actually used it and are going through what you've gone through and have an understanding of that and appreciation that other people don't. So the buddy call system is where somebody thinking about using Optune or has already started it can call in to speak to somebody who's experienced with using Optune that works as an ambassador for them. Novacure will arrange a call at your convenience with someone who's been using it for a while and you have like plenty of time to ask questions and your questions will get answered. 
I love the program. The people I talk to are generally recently diagnosed or have just started on Optune. Glioblastoma doesn't discriminate against people. Um, I've spoken to younger people, older people, anyone and everyone. And the truth is everyone's going through a tough fight with it. And it's very, the calls can get very emotional and um, it's just special to be able to speak to them and help them through it in some small way. They really appreciate being able to connect with somebody else who has the disease and learn the little tips and tricks um, that I've learned and can share with them. The most common questions are, how do you sleep with it? How do you bathe with it? How do you travel? I think sleeping with the device is a big um, topic for discussion. People are worried about maybe if they have to wear it at night, which I think it's the easiest time to wear it and just how to um, like manage the device in bed, different things like that. If I had a friend that was diagnosed, I mean, at, at a minimum, make a call to the buddy program because I feel like you can learn so much more from somebody who's actually using Optune because they're actually living with it every day. I would strongly recommend it for people to talk to other patients just to be able to connect with somebody learn their experience, sort of educate yourself on what it's gonna be like using Optune. It can be sort of a foreign device to you if you're not familiar with it. And I do get questions about, you know, how do you handle questions that people ask you when they see you? And I have funny responses that I enjoy telling them. One of the things I do for little kids, they'll point and be like, mommy, what's that? And their parents are embarrassed and running away. We had a little three-year-old friend came up and said, what's that on your head? And Janine said, that's my mind reading device from NASA. You're excited for Halloween coming up. <laughs> yes. She literally put her head up next to me. <laughs>So as you can see, there's a, again, uh, the, the common theme of multiple resources. This is GBM community online. There's opt-in open houses. So if you have someone who's, who may be you know, not inclined to speak one-on-one -on -one with someone, they can attend an opt-in open house. We, we try to do them live, but with COVID, where they've been continuously, um, they've been in a virtual manner, but you can, you can attend these and be silent in the audience and, and listen. And those are generally uh, done giving, providing information, uh, meeting with a device support specialist, and seeing the device, and actually talking to a patient ambassador as well. And then uh, finally, wrapping it up here, the Encompass support team is really partnered with the patient and the and the your your physician practice every step of the way. They are involved um, and they troubleshoot. They troubleshoot shoot the device 24/7. It's a live person. They are the person that you would reorder your supplies. They answer ongoing questions. They offer tips for travel. So as you heard in, from the ambassadors, many people continue to travel. Um, and as a reminder, you know, Optune is uh, delivered where the tumor site is. These patients um, are getting that training um, on the appropriate uh, application from that device support specialist on where that uh, mapping, if you will, of where to place those arrays are in, the, in that initial teaching. And they're, they're ongoing meeting with those patients once a month and sharing tips on continuously how to improve and, and incorporate Optune into their lives. So I started this today uh, telling you all that I'm, I'm beyond honored to be participating in part of this. And as you can see, I've met, I've met several of the ambassadors over the years and I continue to be honored to be part of this. What questions do you have? Well, thank you, Peggy. That was that was great. I'm always amazed to see the um, the side by side in vitro uh, treated cells. Um, can I ask you uh, to stop the sharing and then I'll open it up. And I'm also going to stop recording. So I'll just say again, sure. thank you. And if you want to learn more about our brain bank, go to ourbrainbank.org. We're collecting data from GBM patients. And we believe the uh, we believe strongly in patient power.